इट्स अ ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी राजीव मिश्रा आर्किटेक्ट करेंटली प्रिंसिपल एट सर जे जे कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर टू वेलकम यू फॉर दिस सेशन ऑन एडवांस इन कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड मटीरियल्स वी हैव थ्री एमिनेंट स्पीकर्स टूडे फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड हु वुड एक्चुअली टॉक अबाउट फॉर्म वर्क कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वेरियस टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट वी नीड टू नो वेन इट कम्स टू हाई राइज बिल्डिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन वी विल विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम इन्वाइट आवर फर्स्ट स्पीकर मिस्टर जोसेफ कोलैको टू द सेशन अलाउ मी टू रीड अ बिट अबाउट हिम over the last 10 years india has seen a growth of lot of tall buildings and the main growth center most of it has been mumbai and delhi it is here that the code issues the construction technology issues high strength concrete issues and the infrastructure issues related to foundation design and also fire become very important this presentation by joseph kolako will discuss these issues highlighting two projects in mumbai twin 60 story towers which are completed currently the tallest in india and a 300 meter tall residential building currently under construction please welcome mr kolako good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you very much for coming to the session of the council of tall buildings and urban habitat Uh, this is a group that was co-founded by my former boss, Dr. Fazlur Khan, uh, from Skidmore, Owings and Merrill in Chicago, where I was working. And I've been involved with the council for over 30 years in various capacities, several committees, and at one point I was chairman of North America for many, many years. So this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, above and beyond that, uh, this is a little bit of what in America we call a homecoming. I was born and raised in Baikala here in Mumbai, uh, went to school at Vijayatiai, and at the time, uh, the tallest building in Mumbai was a building called Usha Kiran, which is about 25 stories tall. Uh, I'm sure that if you go around today, you'll never find it. It's uh, in a sea of very tall buildings. So there's been a transformation. Uh, Bombay has become Mumbai, and buildings that are 25 stories tall are now 60 and 70 stories tall. and i've seen this uh, transformation of my hometown into a major uh, metropolitan area which is very going to be very famous worldwide it's already famous for a lot of different reasons bollywood being the most important one but i think eventually it'll be the the home of many of the important developments in tall building design in the world uh, i'm hoping to contribute a little bit to that as the It, the moderator mentioned uh, I've been involved in some buildings here in Mumbai, and I wanted to just talk about some of the techniques and uh, technology that has been employed uh, here in Mumbai, which is world class. So, uh, I, just as a brief uh, uh, history of myself, I, when I went to work for Skidmore Owings and Merrill, I designed worked on a hundred-story tall building. It's called the John Hancock Center in Chicago. And then we did the uh, the tallest concrete building in the world in Houston. It's a building called One Shell Plaza, which today is only 214 meters tall. It's very very small. But the important thing I learned from that was people kept saying you cannot build a tall concrete building. Concrete just cannot go that high. It'll collapse. It'll fail. There were a lot of rumors to that effect. And if you fast forward to this January, here we've got the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. which is basically a concrete structure that i was involved with and it's about 800 meters tall so uh, technology is available the basic issue is that the people have the will and the guts to go ahead and do a tall building and have the reason for it i'm going to uh, illustrate my talk with a few uh, slides of some of the projects uh, here in india and i will try to uh, tell you a little bit about them and how things have evolved I will harken from time to time to my experience in America and also to my experience in Dubai and show you the continuum of uh, design technology that is spanning the globe right now. Uh, these two uh, buildings that you see on the screen are uh, what brought me back to Mumbai about 10 years ago. Uh, these two towers are in Tardeo which is in South Mumbai for those of you who are not from the city. 
Uh, they are 60 stories tall. They have been topped out, and the occupancy is going to start fairly soon. Uh, the buildings basically are reinforced concrete structures. Uh, there was a, a great deal of anxiety about these buildings because at the time they were being contemplated, these were going to be the tallest buildings in India. And whenever you do a very tall building, you have to obviously be not only uh, daring to build the building, but you also have to be cautious. So for the first time, we began to talk about wind tunnel testing, window wall te testing, very, very high strength concrete. We started talking about firefighting. We talked about how you hold uh, things together and also construction technology. Uh, the original uh, idea was to build a building conventionally, but I managed to talk to the contractor about going with modern systems, and the building went much faster and much cleaner with that kind of uh, technology. We restricted ourselves to M60 concrete on this particular tower because at the time people were a little bit afraid of site, cast, site uh, ready mix, site con uh, made concrete, and they don't think it could get much higher than that. I was pointing out that in Dubai, we use M80 concrete, and we've actually made M100 concrete, but not used it on, on a commercial basis. Could I have the next one? Uh, this is the footprint of the building. Uh, you can see it's basically a trapezoidal-shaped building. Uh, the, we got the lift core in the middle. But one of the problems we had on this building was that in order to maintain stability, in the horizontal direction of the diagram that you're looking at, where the wind loads would be the highest, we were trying to get very deep uh, concrete walls in the, in the building. Restricting the walls only to the core of the building would not have given enough, enough strength and stability to make it work. We would have, have developed what we call uplift under wind conditions. So working with the architects and the contractors, we were able to get the walls to go essentially across the entire width of the building with uh, openings, to, uh, with link beams to make the structure work. And this proved to be very, very efficient and uh, very economical. Now, while we're talking about this floor plan, I'll also mention one of the things here in Mumbai that we are fighting at the moment is that there is a tendency not to go with flat slab construction because there are certain parts of the floor plan that have to be depressed. You depress floors for toilets, you depress floors for water bodies, you definitely dep dep depress the floors for balconies because of the FSI problems and so on. And all these present construction challenges. Uh, we're currently working on a project in Be Bengaluru, the, the, all the names are changed so I've got to be careful, uh, where for the first time we're going to try to use flat slab technology across the board uh, and we'll see how that works. The building's on hold right now so it's not under, under construction but uh, I think that's going to be the next step because if you look at construction in most other parts of the uh, advanced world from Dubai all the way back to America, flat slab technology for res residential construction is the way to go. Next. Now this is a project that I'm not going to speak about too much. This is currently under, a project under construction in uh, Worli, in, also in South Mumbai. It's called the Palais Royal Project. It's uh, 300 meters high. Uh, projected, and the, uh, all the engineers are here, and so is the owner here, and I know that all of you are going to go on a, not all of you, but a lot of you are going to go on the uh, field trip uh, tomorrow, so you will see a lot about it, and uh, Girish Dravid, who is a structural engineer with Sterling, is going to conduct a more detailed discussion of the structural uh, elements of the building. My role in this project was to try to be an advisor to the ownership group and the structural engineering group to implement the latest technologies that we can think of uh, to make this building a very efficient one. The uh, advances we've made over here are in several areas. First of all, we've used M80 concrete, uh, which is a, one of the highest that has been used in Mumbai. Uh, we've actually had cubes made which have shown that M90 and M100 concrete is possible, uh, and that's we're keeping that in the back of our minds. Could I have the next? This is the floor plan of the building. It's basically an octagonal building with an atrium in the middle of it. The octagonal shape proved to be very fortuitous for us because it is, uh, gives you one of the lowest resistances to wind loads. The, the, the shaping of the building that way reduces the drag coefficient substantially lower than the 1.3 to 1.4 that we see in a rectangular building. 
it drops it down to about 0.9 to 1.0. So you, you save almost 30 to 40 percent on wind load. So it's a very, very good shape for the building. The uh, floor plan that I'm showing you is of the apartment levels up above. But down below, as you can see in, in the previous slide, the elevation, uh, there's car parking with a car lift uh, going all the way up to the top of the uh, car parking levels. There's tremendous amenities. We, you'll, you'll see some of these explained to you tomorrow, so I'm not going to go too much into uh, those details. Next. Uh, the ownership and the contractor decided to go modern with the form work system. And here's a shuttering system using the MEVA system for the project. Uh, this is a very modern system. Those of you who have followed the development of the, of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai know that they use the DOCA system for the main shuttering on the building, and that enabled that building also to go very, very quickly. So the uh, shuttering systems, and the next one, with a placement boom, all bring you up to concrete technology as it is practiced in most parts of the world. So if, when you get there tomorrow, you will begin to see some of the most modern concrete technology that you'll find anywhere in the world employed on this uh, structure. It's a very interesting building to look at. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to see the raft foundation. It was a very challenging raft. There's, uh, there's site-mixed concrete on the project, uh, and there are lots of other features, all of which you will see when you get there tomorrow. Could I have the next one? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about an office building. Uh, office building development in India is lagging behind residential at the moment, but it's not going to be very far behind. Uh, these are twin towers at 28 stories tall in uh, Gurgaon, which is a suburb of uh, Delhi in Haryana. Uh, the owner did not want me to show the elevation of the building because it's not been finalized and not been shown to some key people in the building uh, department. So I'm sorry I cannot show you the, the building elevation. But they are uh, very well detailed uh, buildings. The architects HOK from Houston, where I live. Uh, the structure we worked on, again, we are pushing very hard for flat slab technology. But this particular owner, who also happens to be from Houston, uh, prefers to have 12 meter dimensions from the core to the outside wall. So the question became, how do you get a 12 meter span in flat slab technology? Uh, we originally had beam and slab construction, which is fairly common across the board. But he said, no, 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 I have to have flat slab. So I came up with this idea of pulling the col exterior columns inboard by about three meters, uh, thereby cantilevering the last three meters. And we made office layouts, which showed that those columns would fall along the partition lines inside the building and it would not be an obstruction to flexibility in office space. So in so doing, we were able to do a flat slab design with drop panels. We have the slab thickness is 250 mm, and the drop panel that goes below that by 100 mm. Uh, we are also currently looking at a possibility of post-tensioning the slabs. Uh, there are some issues with the post-tensioning in our office tower. And I don't think you can see it uh, in there, but we have left the possibility of cutting holes in the slab to build cutouts in the future. If somebody wants to build a, a staircase, we're designating four spots on each floor where you can have a cutout to make an interconnecting stair between two floors. So all these issues have been very, very carefully worked out. Now, I don't know how many architects there are in this room, but one of the issues on tall building design, obviously, is the architectural structural interaction. There was a great deal of concern on this three meter cantilevered span that the deflections would be so large that we would have problems with the window wall, this very exquisite glass wall on the outside. So we satisfied the owners that we could control the deflections of the slab to a point where after the slab was constructed and the curtain wall was built, that the deflections would be in the range of less than 10 millimeters in the, in the, long, in the long term, considering shrinkage and creep. So after looking at that, they were uh, decided to go ahead with this uh, design. The construction is going to start in one month, and uh, we expect the buildings to be finished in less than two years. Uh, there's, besides these two towers, each one has got 600,000 square feet. There's a car park for 3,000 cars associated with it. So it's a very, very large project in Gurgaon. And it will be the tallest building in Gurgaon for, for some time to come. Uh, the reason I know it's going to be the tallest is because they've got problems with the approaches to Indira Gandhi Airport. So there are some certain height restrictions that are not going to be broken anytime soon. Could I have the next one? 
Uh, I'm going to discuss some other types of projects where we've tried to uh, move the technology a little bit forward. Uh, this is a project actually in Dubai, but the whole team is from Bombay, from Mumbai, sorry. Uh, this is called the Hercon Tower, developed by the Hiranandanis, who happen to be here in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, the architect is also a Mumbai architect, Hafiz contractor. Uh, it's a 72-story tall tower. And on this particular one, the owner wanted very, very large, clear spans between the outside of the building and the core. And the question then became, how do you achieve that and still maintain some of these ideas we're talking about? One of the issues uh, that is a problem on tall building design, uh, and those of you who are structural engineers will know, that when the wind is blowing uh, east to west, horizontally in the picture, you're bending the shear walls about the weak axis. And you have link beams that connect the, the flanges of the, of the walls, and they take a tremendous amount of stresses. As a matter of fact, it's very difficult within the constraints of the floor to ceiling height to get uh, a link beam to work. So I suggested to the owners that looking at the layout, that we put a wall all the way down the middle of the building horizontally in the picture. And they have finally approved it. Uh, this is a full width wall that runs across the width of the building. And it goes all the way from the podium to the top of the building. The layouts permitted that. And in the parking garage, we make openings for the driveways, six meter wide openings for the driveways. But we have very large spans. We've got a post tension floor slab on, in the building. It's 230 millimeters thick. And on the perimeter, we have very large spans. As you can see, there are very few columns, which is desirable in an apartment to let, have less obstruction of the view. So we also have post tension flat girders on the outside of the building. The building is in the Dubai Marina and it's almost topped out as we speak. So you can see how some of these ideas keep floating around and can be implemented in different projects. Next. This is an elevation of the building that, uh, they're, like I said, they're about to top the building out and the architect has got a nice little hat on top of it which makes it a very, look like a very tall building. Next. Uh, this is another project here in North Mumbai. Uh, this is a totally different kind of project. This is a hotel being built by uh, Nirmal Lifestyles. Uh, I know that Dharmesh Jain is going to be here uh, talking to this conference, and I'm sure he's going to talk about this one. So I'll be very, very brief. The engineer on this architect on this project, again, is Hafiz Contractor. The engineer is Sterling Engineering from uh, Mumbai. And the concept on this one was to build three elevator cores and take them up and then build seven story blocks of hotel rooms like a bridge. So you can see that once you build these hotel rooms as a bridge, you can suspend them at any height inside the project. The idea behind this uh, concept now is the towers, the service cores are gonna go on up. These seven story blocks of hotel rooms will be built on the ground out of structural steel. The steel will be in place, all seven stories of it. The metal deck will be in place. The entire seven-story block will be lifted and locked into place, and then the concreting work for the slabs will go forward. Uh, the interesting challenges on this building, not only is there a span between the two towers, but you can see that they can't leave us out. So it really looks like a double cantilevered bridge, which most of you are familiar with uh, being built across the world. Uh, could I have the next one? This is the architectural floor plan of the building. You can see the room layout, it's a hotel, and it's got a central corridor with rooms laid out on each side of the corridor. There are two different room widths. Some of them are four and a half meters wide, and some of them are five meters wide. And so we had to adjust some of the truss work to suit that. Next one. The structural concept that we developed along with Sterling indicates you have two very long trusses that run along the corridor walls uh, on each side of the corridor. And then when you come to the left on the right side of the core, they can't leave her out. So it's, uh, it's a main spine of the building. Then you have cross trusses that also can't leave her out from the main spine and can't leave her to the edge of the, of the building. And then we put floor beams only in partition lines, thereby maintaining the floor heights and not interrupting any of the space that the architects like to see. Uh, very elaborate computer models have been made both during the erection proceeding process 
and also to, during the final design to again be sure that the cantilever movements are, are reasonably well done. Uh, this concludes the slides that I have. I think I'm beginning to get close to my time limit. And uh, I want to first of all tell you that those of you who are from Mumbai, you're, you live in exciting times as Confucius said. Uh, for those of you who are in the 30 and 40 year age bracket, you will have a lot of things to tell your grandchildren when you get to my age. Uh, and I wish you all a very good conference and a very good development of the city of Mumbai. Thank you.